Yeah. She said, I said it. Come on here. Come on, somebody. This is part two, YouTube. All right. Hallelujah. Listen. Glory to God. Woo. I feel a move of God tonight. Hallelujah. Listen, those of you that just said it, the woman of God said, I said it. Hallelujah. Listen, 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 listen to me in the Holy Ghost. God is about to perform his word concerning you. Manifestation is getting ready to come quickly, says the Lord. This is why you need to be encouraged on tonight. Amen. Be greatly encouraged, people of God. I have a word in my belly. I got to be obedient and I have to release it. Amen. I have to be obedient and release this word tonight. I'm excited. Amen. Once again, I am Apostle Carmen Haywood, the proud pastor of PIPW Ministry all the way in Raleigh, North Carolina. Listen, I am only here because I am on assignment. Do you hear me? I am here in North Carolina because I am on assignment. And some of you, God is getting ready to relocate and you're going to be on assignment too. You're going to understand, hallelujah, why God has shifted you. You're going to understand, hallelujah, why God has, has performed things in your life already. You're going to understand, amen, why God has begun to close some doors and sever the tie with some people. You are about to understand, hallelujah, why the sabotage had to happen, why, why they had to stab you in the back. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Why your friends, they was your friends three years ago, but now you look around, Sister Kashina, and ain't nobody there. You like where my friends at? Well, where are those that said they got my back? God severed the tie. He let them walk away. Somebody shout, it was good that I was afflicted. Ha! Hallelujah. So that I may know him. Come on here. It is good. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. Come on, Tia. It was good that I was afflicted. Come on, Minister Jasper. It's good that you're going through right now. Hey, God said, go through as a good soldier. Hallelujah. Keep your armor on. Glory to God. She said, none, none, none. Ain't nobody around. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The people you used to talk to and pray with, they ain't even there no more. They ain't even saying nothing no more. And some of you got people that's there, um, Sister Stephanie, but they ain't saying nothing. You call them on the phone, they ain't got nothing to say. So God has silenced their mouth because there's nothing to say. Come on, because God has been speaking to you. Come on, he's about to perform his word. Hallelujah. So that's just like when the judge comes in the courtroom and it's all chaotic. And there's so much chaos in the courtroom. What does the judge do? He grabs the gavel and he bangs the gavel and he says, order in the court. Hold on. I need everything to be quiet because I'm about to give my ruling. Woo! Hallelujah. Who am I talking to? This ain't even my message, but I hear God tonight. He's about to bang the gavel concerning you. Woo! Somebody shot a final decision. It's getting ready to come. Hey! Hallelujah. All right. All right, I'm getting excited for y'all tonight. <laughs> my belly is on fire, for real, for real. My hands, hallelujah, are on fire. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody need to tell the Lord yes. Come on, give him a good yes this time. Give him a yes all the way deep down in your belly. Hallelujah. Come on, this fire, hallelujah, cannot be contained. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Hallelujah. Shut up in my bones. I cannot contain this fire. Hallelujah. This ain't made up. I'm not here because I want to be here. Hallelujah. God has set me on fire for his people. Glory to God. He set me on fire for the assignment. Hallelujah. I am set on fire and I'm ready for the devil. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Somebody shout, I'm armed and dangerous. This is not a time to play with the prophets. This is not a time to come against the prophets. But this is a time, hallelujah, to square your shoulders and say, devil, take your best shot. I double dare you, Satan. I double dare you to try me. Hallelujah. While God got me armed and dangerous, devil, I double dare you. I triple dare you. Glory to God to come against my family, to come against my kids, to come against my money. Satan, you a liar and you are defeated. Come on, somebody. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to, I got to come on down just for a minute. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes uh, sister Lashanta, hallelujah. The fire can be so hot. Hallelujah. It's fresh fire. Glory to God is hot off the press. Glory. Hallelujah. It's fresh off the press. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. And how many of you know, glory to God, that when God sends his fire, he comes to do a few things. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Oh, we got the flow tonight. I'm going to release the word in just a minute. Hallelujah. But God is telling me to tell you all that the fire comes for a few reasons. Um, come on, Sister Andrea, stay with me for a little while. Hallelujah. The fire, glory to God, it comes, amen, to burn up those things that are inside of you that need to be burned up. But then the fire, hallelujah, sometimes it comes to set you ablaze. Who am I talking to? Then the fire, hallelujah, can come, Sister Vanessa. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. To put you on fire, to set you on fire so that you can keep on going in the things of God. Somebody shout the fire. Hallelujah. It comes to do a few things. And, and when God sends his fire, hey, hallelujah. When God Hallelujah. When, when, when the Lord, hey, Shatan Baha, when the Lord sends his fire, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. It's to do a few things. And sometimes, uh, hallelujah, the fire comes to burn up that which is inside of you that don't belong no more. You know, the old saints used to say, if you find anything in me, oh God, I ask that you burn it out of me. Come on. We don't hear that in the church no more. Glory to God. But God sends his fire. Oh, Reman Sukkot Abashe to burn up those things that that are inside of us that just don't belong no more. I can't go into another year with the same mindset. Ooh, so God has to come and burn out my stinking thinking. Who am I talking to? Come on here. You can't go into a new year. Hey, glory to God. You can't go into 2023. Hallelujah. And not be free. Did you hear me? You got to be free. Your mindset got to be clear. Hey, Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm going into 23 free. Woo. Hallelujah. God done shifted my whole message. It's all right. Hallelujah. I'm going into 23 free. I'm going in free. I'm going in free because he made me a promise. Come on. Because God gave you a promise, you got to go in free. Your hands up. Hallelujah. Got to be lifted to God. And what that means is whatever he's telling you to release, you got to release it. Whatever he's telling you to give, you got to give it. You can't go into the new year like this. You got to go like this. You, you got to go free. Woo. Come on here. That's just like when the cops pull you over and they say, get out the car. You get out the car, they say, lift your hands. They want to make sure you ain't got no weapons. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Come on here. So it's just like God. Hallelujah. He said it's time to surrender. Come on, somebody. And surrenderance is just like this. I surrender. I surrender, God. I give you everything. I'm not going to hold anything back from you. I give you everything, God. Hallelujah. So my hands got to be open like this. Come on, in order for me to receive from the Lord. See, some of y'all trying to go into 2023 like this. You trying to go in like this. Holding your little coins and holding your pennies and I'm going to wait for a rainy day. Well, guess what's going to happen? It's going to continue to rain in your life. Oh, my God. But when you go in like this, you say, Lord, you got everything. You got my heart. You got my mind. You got my spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I done paid my tithes and gave my offering. Come on. Anybody pay their tithes yet? <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. You better pay your tithes before you cross over into the new year. Talking about the Lord get ready to bless me. How is he going to bless you when you ain't paid one tithe? Get out of here. Come on. You behind on your tithe. You ain't paid your tithes in three months. Come on. Open your hand. <laughs> and give God what he's asking for. Give God what he's asking for. Come on, Sister Kashina said, wouldn't miss it. I can vouch for her as her pastor. She pays her tithes. Oh, I got a faithful few in my ministry that pay their tithes now. I can count on one hand though. Come on, out of the 50 members, I can count on one hand. How many people pay their tithes and give their offering? Come on, it's sad, but it's true. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You better go in the new year paying your tithes and giving your offering. You better go in this new year. Hallelujah. With a new mindset. 
Come on, you, you better go in. Hey, Shatan Nabaha, you better go in this new year saying, Lord, here I am. Take all of me. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, God, use me for your glory. Because see, so many people want God to use them. Here's the revelation. But if you ain't faithful, hey, Shatan Nabaha, you got to be faithful over the little so that God can make you ruler of much. And that's what he's about to do for the faithful few. Come on. So there is a word from God on tonight. Amen. Thank you all for the greetings tonight. Listen, I had to be obedient. I don't usually come on on a Tuesday. Amen. She said, tithes. he says tithes is important. That's right. But who you tithing to? Come on. Where are you tithing to? Where are you planting your seed? Come on. You can't expect nothing if you don't give people a God. Listen, come on here. Stop saying it and not doing it now. Come on, you, you, if you're going to say it, make sure you're doing it. Come on, be a man of your word. Be a, a woman of your word. Come on, somebody. And then you need to start gathering your first fruit seed. Uh-oh. See, I might not be your pastor, but I teach my ministry. Get your first fruit seed in the ground, too. Because that first fruit seed is biblical. And not only is it biblical, it sustains you for the entire year. Ask me how I know. Get your first fruit seed in the ground and your first fruit seed is sown in the first week of the new year. I ain't come on here for that, but I will teach in a minute. Listen, gather your first fruit seed now. And guess what? Your first fruit seed is not $10. Your first fruit seed is not $20. Your first fruit seed is an abundant seed, people of God. I ain't going to tell you what the amount is. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm just going to challenge you tonight. I'm going to challenge you as God's people to really obey him now. Come on. Hallelujah. I know why I, hear, I just heard 222. I don't know who that's for. Amen. Your, your, your first fruit seed might be $222. Come on, somebody. I just heard 222. I don't know who that is for, but obey God. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's within the first week of the new year. You always gather your first fruit seed. There, there are many scriptures on it. I'm not here for that tonight. But if you want to know what it is, I'll inbox it to you. And make sure that you really do what God is saying to do now. Amen. Stop making your pastors work and making the prophet work. Who am I talking to? Y'all Y'all make the pastors work and the prophet work and y'all not even faithful. Hey, glory to God. Come on here. Y'all got the pastors working and laboring and teaching Bible study and pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. And then you want the church doors to close? Who am I talking to? So, so wait a minute. So 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 let me let me understand because I know I hear God. Hold on. So, so you saying that you want to go to church. You want the doors to stay open, but you don't give your tithe or your offering so that the doors can stay open. As the young people say, make it make sense. Come on. So this year, going into New Year, 2023, be faithful. Start out being faithful. Hallelujah. Come on. He, he, he typed Malachi 3 and 10. That's right. Bring all ye the tithe. Bring the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house, saith the Lord. He says, improve me now. Herewith saith the Lord of hosts and see if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive. Come on, 2023, we have to stop taking the word that we want to take for ourselves and not taking all of it. Come on, in this new year, you can't just pick the word that you like. No, you got to eat all of it. Who am I talking to? Th this is the time where you got to eat all of the word. Come on, so many people take this part and take that part. Oh, I take the blessings, but I don't want the correction. I'll take the blessings, but I don't want rebuke. Well, how can you grow? The only way you can grow is through chastisement. Come on. This is why our parents had to chastise us. Come on. Come on. You, you spoil, you spare the ride, you spoil the child. Come on. In other words, if there's no discipline in your life, there's no accountability. That's why you all over the place. I'm making some people mad. Some people that got off of Instagram. <laughs> it doesn't even matter anymore. Come on, because just like the prophets are over it, God is over it too. Hey, somebody need to put that on Facebook. Make sure you tag me in that. Just as the prophets are over it, God is over it too. Did you know that? Come on, because he sends his prophet 
who is hearing directly from him to release the word to you, not just to bring you a blessing, but to bring you instructions. Come on. The prophet comes to bring instructions. Who am I helping tonight? The prophet comes to bring you instructions that will prosper you if you listen. Come on. Those instructions come to prosper you if you listen. Hallelujah. When you bless the prophet in the name of a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. So there are so many things that are connected to the prophet, but this is what happens. People dishonor the prophet. We shifting again. People dishonor the prophet because you know what they say? I can read the word for myself. I can study for myself. I can pray for myself. I don't need a prophet. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And guess what? Many of you need a prophet like never before now because the enemy is working overtime to get in your ear gate. See, the enemy is working overtime while you sleeping. He's standing over top of your bed. Come on. It was confirmed last night when we was on the live. Come on. So many of you got demonic entities in your home. You got demonic entities talking to your children. Oh, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Come on here. You, you got demonic activity in your house. And you talking about you hearing from God. How and when. Come on. So it takes the prophet to give you what thus saith the Lord. To give you instructions. So that you can continue to live. So that you can continue to prosper in the things of God. Come on. That's why God sends the prophet. Ha! Ah, hallelujah. If you look all throughout scripture, even in the Old Testament, God sent the prophets to send warning, to send judgment, to send correction. Come on. Now we look for the prophet to bring blessings like the prophet of Santa Claus. <laughs> Come on here. If you receive correction, if you receive rebuke, then you will grow. You'll grow by leaps and bounds. Hey, your feelings won't be hurt all the time. You won't get so offended all the time. You'll start growing and you'll see the growth and you'll be able to say, wait a minute. Now God can use me. Now the Lord can use me. Hallelujah. Now God can use me because I've grown a little bit. I'm no longer immature. Who am I talking to? Hallelujah. Because you have allowed the correction and the rebuke of the Lord to be your portion. Hey, somebody shout. That's how you grow. Come on. That's how we grow church. Come on. Hallelujah. Listen, hey, Shatanda Baha. We learn him in the valley. We don't learn God on the mountaintop. When he lets you have a mountaintop experience, that's because you did something right. Woo! When he gives you the victory, that's because you did something right. That's because you suffered a while. Hey! Hallelujah. You didn't give up when you could have gave up. Come on. So, so your, your mountaintop experience is only because it's time for the victory. But you, you learn him in the valley. We learn God through tests and trials. The Bible says tests and trials worketh patience. But in the book of James, it goes further to say, but let patience have her perfect work. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, so, hey, when God is producing something in you, he's calling forth for correction. Say, we're going to pause right there and think about that. Come on. That's just like when your kids is cutting up in school. You bring forth correction to get them back in alignment. Woo. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Correction comes to get you back in alignment. Correction don't come for you to have your, your feelings on your shoulders and for you to get offended. See, the spirit of offense mm, leads to injury. And, and when you get injured, <laughs> see, a person that gets injured or a person that's always offended, they're always getting injured. Catch the revelation. And that's just like a person who's offended. They always got something to say about everything, but it's always negative. It's never positive because they are offended. Who am I helping tonight? It's seven of you that deal with the spirit of offense. Don't go into 2023 with that. 
Listen, be free in 23. <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. Listen, go into the new year. Listen, shake it off. Do so, Listen, do a prophetic move. Take your hands. Take your hands like this and go just like this. Come on, dust it off. Dust it off. Listen, I, I take, I, I shake it up. Come on. That offense, take, do, do just like that. No, no, it's not my portion. Ha! Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Stop going into new years offended. Or with unforgiveness. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The Lord says this is the time. A few days before we cross over into 2023. This is the time to forgive. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Forgive them, said the Lord. God said forgive them. All who have hurt you in 2022. Forgive them. I don't care if they were a pastor. I don't care if they were a lay member. I don't care if it was the choir director. Forgive them. I don't care if it was the praise team. Forgive them. Come on. It could have been the head missionary. Forgive them. Come on. It could have been your boss on your job. Forgive them. Could have been your auntie or your uncle. Forgive them. Whoever it is, the Lord says forgive them. And after you forgive them, forgive yourself. Holy Ghost is speaking tonight. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. You, you got to forgive yourself now. See, because a lot of times when there's a situation, yes, Lord, I hear you. God says when there's friction, when there's a back and forth, you have a part to play and that person had a part to play too. So that's another thing. We have to stop going into two, into New Year's saying, oh, so-and-so did this to me. Yeah, but you played the part also. Come on. It, it takes two to tango. I'm just saying. I ain't saying you tango with the person. I'm just saying. It takes two to be involved in something. It takes two to argue. It takes two to have a disagreement. Come on. So you forgive them and then you forgive yourself. Come on. And then you go to God and say, Lord, I repent for my part. Who am I talking to? Jesus, have mercy. This is for somebody tonight. Then you say, Lord, I repent for my part. The part that I played in it. God, forgive me. Come on. That's how you get free. Come on. We're going into 23 free. <laughs> God done shifted my whole message. It's all right. Amen. This is just part two of the overflow that we just came out of. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, go into 23 free. I'm going to be free. Come on. So that I can walk in the things that God has predestined for me. Come on. I'm going to be free now. Hallelujah. Free in my mind. Free in my heart. She says, you're helping me. Free, free in my spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. Not taking any, any, yes, Lord, I hear you. Any form of bondage with me. Ha. Ah, glory to God. Not taking anything that is going to weigh me down. Come on. The Bible says, lay aside the weight and the sin. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Come on. There's five of you. Listen, you got to lay it aside. Come on, you, you got to lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. What does beset mean? Let's just talk for a minute. Beset means, people of God, to pull you back. Yeah, when, when you become beset, it, it pulls you back. It pulls you back further than when you started. Come on. So God says, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily pull you back. Come on. And can I just help about seven of you that think that you can keep sinning and doing whatever you want to do and God don't see you and God is not trying to deliver you. He wants to deliver you. Come on. See, it's messages, it's messages like this that got me free. Come on. It was preaching like this that got me free. I'm so glad that people didn't sugarcoat word to me. I'm so glad that the mothers of the church told me, baby, you got to live right. Hey, because there's an anointing on your life. Woo. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that my former pastor pulled me to the side often and said, Carmen, you can't do that. They could do that, but, but you can't do that. 
Hey, glory to God. Wait a minute. Hold on, prophet. Is you, you can't do what everybody else is doing. You can't go where everybody else is going. Hmm. Because there's an anointing on your life. Don't let your good be evil spoke. Hey, Shatan Baha. Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Hmm. Come on. Come on. Because the enemy is waiting for you. Who am I talking to? Hey, Shatanda Baha, the enemy is waiting to pull the cover, to bring exposure to your mess. So repent tonight. Get free tonight. <laughs> come on, come clean tonight. And say, Lord, I repent. I lay it at your feet, Jesus. I give it over to you, God. And as I teach my, my members and covenant partners, I teach my church this. And I'm going to teach some of y'all tonight. Call out the sin. Stop saying I repent. Just, you know, stop saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I won't do it again. Call it out. Call out the sin. Why do you call that sin out? Because number one, it frees you. And number two, it exposes the enemy. If you're a liar and you know you're a liar and you just keep on lying and you can't stop lying, you just got the lies, your, your tongue just won't stop lying, your mouth just won't stop speaking lies, when you repent, Lord, forgive me for lying. See the difference? You're on your way to freedom when you do that. Because now the enemy is sitting back and looking and saying, wait a minute, they called it out. If you're a fornicator, Lord, please forgive me for fornicating. And God, help me not to fornicate anymore. Come on. Call the sin out. Can somebody put that in the comments? I'm going to call the sin out. Come on. The Bible says confess your sins. That means open your mouth and say exactly what you've been doing. Uh-oh. If you're a backbiter, <laughs> oh, we going here tonight. You're a backbiter and you just can't stop talking about your brothers and sisters. You just got to gossip and you just have to bite people's back out. Lord, forgive me for backbiting. Come on, you a gossiper? Lord, forgive me for gossiping. Come on. Sin is sin. But when it comes to repentance, call it out. I promise you, you gonna, listen, you're going to start getting free. You're going to say, wait a minute, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Come on, start calling that sin out in your time of prayer and you're going to feel so much better. I promise you, amen. You're going to feel so much better. Hallelujah. Jesus is going to take the weights off of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The weight of that sin and even the shame that is attached to sin. Do you know there is shame that is attached to sin? That's why when you go and do stuff you ain't got no business doing, you're trying to run and hide saying, I hope don't nobody see me. <laughs> that's why even children when they go inside the kitchen and they try to steal some cookies and mommy or daddy said don't you eat them cookies in, the, in that out of that kitchen and that's why when the child go in there they creeping they like hold on i know the cookie is on the counter they snatched the cookie and now they looking around like wait a minute is anybody gonna see me eating this cookie <laughs> and then they hurry up and stuff the cookie in their mouth catch the revelation sin you can't even enjoy it because you try listen it's not supposed to be enjoyed anyway. You got to sneak and do it. Come on. We all been there. Come on. But you have to call the sin out now. Call it out in your time of prayer. Hallelujah. So that God can free you. So that God can deliver you. Go into the new year free. Hallelujah. Go into 2023 free. Come on, go into this new year free in your mind, free in your spirit. Amen. Let me be obedient to God because I'm not even supposed to be on here tonight. I'm supposed to be resting. Glory to God. Amen. I come on every Monday and Wednesday and Friday. Amen. It's Tuesday night. 
Hallelujah. But it's okay. Amen. It's okay. It's all right. Amen. The Lord said for me to tell the people of God, and I released this word, amen, on my dear sister, uh, Minister uh, Sharita Clark, on her platform about 7.30, 7.45, somewhere around there. And as I stated earlier, it was myself and another young lady, amen, who had the liberty to grace that platform on today. Amen. And I thank God for Minister Sharita. Amen. I don't know if she's still on, but I thank God for her. To God be the glory. Amen. Um, and so God told me to come on here and release this word because many of you did not hear it on that platform. Amen. So stay with me as long as you can. So the word of the Lord that God gave me to release is God said uh, for me to tell the people of God that he wants you to give it to him. Give it to him so that he can break it. Give it to God so that he can break it now let me just stop right there because a lot of times we believe we give things over to the lord and he makes us whole i'm just gonna give it to jesus so he can make me whole well the truth of the matter is in order for you to be made whole you have to first be broken Ha! Huh? glory to god we have to first be broken right so the bible says in psalm uh 51 and 17 Psalm 51 and 17. Let's, let's start out with that scripture tonight. Amen. Psalm 51 and 17. Yes, yes, yes. I need somebody to write in the comments. I give it to you, Lord, so that you can break it. Come on. Somebody write that in the comments tonight. I, I give it over to you, Lord, so that you can break it. Uh-huh. It's going to all make sense in just a minute. Psalm 51 and 17 says what? It says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. Amen. So God desires for us, and this is a sacrifice now. So as you're giving it over to God, and I'm going to give you the three things that God told me to tell you all to give to him. Amen. There are three things that God said for his people to give to him before we cross over in the 2023. All right. So once again, the sacrifices of God. So this is a sacrifice now. So out of the 30 of you that are on Facebook, if you're not ready to sacrifice yourself or sacrifice your time or give God what he's asking for, this word is not for you. Amen. This word is not for you, but for those of you that are ready to sacrifice and to really give God you, this word is for you. Amen. So it says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Lord, break my spirit. Ah, glory to God. Lord, break my spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And give me a contrite heart. Now, a contrite heart is a heart that can receive. And a heart that can give. Come on. So, so, so God wants a contrite heart and a broken spirit. So when we have a broken spirit, we can come to the place of repentance like David spoke of in Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a psalm of repentance, right? Where David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit, Right? So David goes on to say all the way down, it gets to this part of 17 where it says, and the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. This is a little bit deeper now. A broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. God would not overlook. Woo. That's the NIV. The NIV says God would not overlook you when you have a broken spirit. Ha, ah, glory to God and a contrite heart. Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody on tonight. And then he reminded me of communion. This was earlier today. The Lord took me all the way in, Sister Ashley. He took me all the way in. Come on. And so he reminded me of communion. He said, daughter, you know how you break the bread? He said, you know how, you know how when, you take, when you do communion, he said, the bread is broken, which represents my body. I said, yes, Lord. He said, and you know that the wine represents my blood? I said, yes, Lord. He said, it's just like communion. Hey, he said, my body was broken. Hey, Shatanda Baha, my body was broken for mankind to be saved. He said, my body was broken so that they can partake 
of the Lord's Supper. Glory to God. He said, my body was broken in remembrance of my crucifixion, in remembrance of how I was broken. Hallelujah. To save, ah, to save the souls of man. I said, yes, Lord. So he told me today, he said, daughter, it's the same thing. Woo. He said, when my people come to me, I have to break them. Huh? Glory to God. He said, I have to break them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, now many are not willing to be broken. Ah, glory to God. And this is why they run away from my presence because they really don't want to be broken. Woo. I told you all on the earlier broadcast that God gave me some more that I had to release. And this is the more that he gave me. Okay. I got to be obedient tonight. I have to be obedient tonight. So, so the breaking of the body of Jesus, which represents the bread, it represents the cracker. It re represents the wafer, whatever you use. Amen. When you are partaking of communion, catch the revelation, but see Jesus being broken and being crucified was the ultimate sacrifice. Hey, hallelujah. But that is our example of what we need today. Somebody shout today. Come on, this is what we need today. We need God to break us. Hey, hallelujah. We, we need God to break us because after he breaks us, he puts us back together again. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And God says, what are you willing to sacrifice going into 2023? He told me to ask that question. What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give in exchange? Ah, for what God has for you. Somebody may say, I don't have to give anything. Well, the truth of the matter is, yes, you do. And these are the three things that God told me to tell the people of God today. He said, tell them that I need for them to present their body to me. He said, tell them I need them to present their bodies to me. That's what the Lord said. And then he took me to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Let's turn there quickly. Those of you that have your Bibles, some of you may not, because this is a pop-up Zoom. Amen. We're usually not on. So some of you might be en route. You might be traveling. You might have just got in the house. You may be getting ready to go to bed. So you might not have your sword. I understand. I do understand. Amen. But if you got your Bible near you, read the word of God with me. All right. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And this is the Apostle Paul here. What does the Apostle Paul say to the people? He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He said, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Somebody shout, this is what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. And verse two goes on to say, and be not conformed to this world. Let the world go. Let the ways of the world go. Don't be conformed to it, which means don't look like the world, don't act like the world, don't talk like the world. I know some of y'all, I'm not your pastor, but you need this type of teaching. And be not reman sukkot of I hear you, God. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And be there. Hey, yes, Lord, I hear you. The Lord says this is the time for many of you to make the decision to have a covering now. Woo. Many of you are uncovered. Go into this new year with a covering. Go into this new year with a pastor. It may not be me, but you better have one. Go into 2023 covered. Find you a church. Find you a pastor that would teach you the word of God. Stop following these prophets up and down on Facebook. Listen. 
Prophecy. <laughs> Prophecy is not going to help you live right. Hey, God, and I prophesy all the time. Do you hear me? I'm a prophet by nature. I am born a prophet. Huh? So I can prophesy in my sleep. Woo! But prophecy is not everything. Many of you, you, you lean and depend on the prophecy more than you lean and depend on living right. So if Jesus was to come back, you waiting on the prophecy and he says, wait a minute, you will be waiting on me. <laughs> You're supposed to be presenting your body a living sacrifice to me, holy and acceptable unto me, saith the Lord. Not waiting for the house, not waiting for the car. Oh, come on here. Not waiting for the husband or waiting for the wife. Those things are going to come when you learn to be obedient to God. This is why the Lord stopped me right here. As I was reading the word, he said, many of you need a covering. You need a pastor. Stop thinking you don't need it. And if you have a leader that's not covering you, uh, I'm not telling you to leave your church. But hear the spirit of the Lord. Come on. There's a lot of false coverings. Hey, I know my sick. Hey, I hear you, God. There's a lot of false coverings out there, too. They ain't going to tell you about yourself. They just want your tithe and want your money. Uh-oh. See, I'm the prophet that's going to tell you the truth because I hear God. Come on. The Lord says it's, now is the time to make the decision. The Lord just stopped me as I was reading the word. He stopped me and said, tell my people to make the right decision now. It's not going to hurt you. It's going to help you. Come on. And if you're afraid to join a church or have a pastor, something wrong. <laughs> Come on. We getting ready to start Bible study on Zoom at my church. Yeah, we can right have Bible study, you know, for the members of Covenant Partners. God told me two months ago. He said, daughter, set up the Zoom and start having Bible study on Zoom Wednesday night. So that's what we're getting ready to do. But that's for me to pour into my members. Amen. So I won't be on social media as much. Catch the revelation. Come on. I'm telling you all, you're going to look around. I spoke this word the other night. God gave it to me. He's bringing it back to me. Some of you are going to look around and you're going to go back to your churches and the doors are going to be shut. Some of you are going to look for your famous preacher on Facebook or your pastor and they're not going to be there. Get connected, get plugged in and get plugged in now. Get connected, get plugged in, and plug in now. The time has come. The time has come. And this is why the Bible says, and God is bringing it back to me. Yes, Lord, I hear you. This is why the Bible says the time will come when many will not be able to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear it. Because they've been so used to the Baptist preaching. They've been so used. Ah, I don't know if we got any Kojic folk on here. But they've been so used to one, two, three, shout. To where there's no sound doctrine to hold them. Hey, hallelujah. So that when they have the opportunity to sin, Sister Joy, they won't sin. But see, when, when you have sound doctrine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is teach and preach under the anointed. What happens is conviction can now come. So now you are convicted because the truth of the matter is you can do whatever you want to do in the name of the Lord. So many people, hey, they say God said, but you got to make sure that it's God. So many people do so many things in the name of the Lord, Sister Ashley, but it ain't in God. Do you hear me? When it's sound doctrine, it brings correction. 
And this is why the Bible says in the last days, hey, hallelujah, God said, I will pour my spirit out, hallelujah, upon all flesh. He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams and have visions. But that is of the end times. Come on, that's of the end times. Come on, so prophets, thank you, Evangelist Arlene, thank you for your seed tonight. Prophets, we, hey, Shatan Nabaha, we have the responsibility to prepare the people for the end time, for the return of Jesus. Now, if you obey Matthew 6 and 33, he's going to give you a house. He's going to give you the car. He's going to give you more money. He's going to give you the land. He's going to give you the businesses if you obey him. But this is why we can't get caught up. Right, Sister Cynthia? We can't get caught up in just the blessing. Because God wants us to produce fruit. Come on, before Jesus left the, the, the disciples, what did he say? He said, listen, hey, Shatan Nabaha. He said, I, I want you to have much fruit. Come on. He, he said, hey, glory to God. He said, I want you to bear much fruit because you are my disciples indeed, the love that you have towards one another. Do you know love is something that has to be taught? <laughs> Some say love has to be shown. That's not true. Love is shown, but love has to also be taught. You can see love and still never love. <laughs> Come on. Love has to be taught based upon the word. Because Jesus is love. God is love. So when you know the word, come on here. Hallelujah. Then you know what love is. Ah. This is why we can't base, quote unquote, love. Love that people have on love. In other words, the love of humans is fickle, unless you got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on. If you have the Holy Spirit, then you have the love of God. We done shifted again. Mm. I don't know who I'm talking to right here, but hear the word of the Lord. Glory to God. This is why we need the love of God, the love of Christ. Hallelujah, which spreads abroad. Amen. It spreads. And then not only that, the love of God, it flows. Ha! Ah, glory to God. From heart to heart and from breast to breast. So it flows one to another. That's why we have to give God everything that doesn't belong in us. This is why God said tonight to give it to him and let him break it. Give God your heart and let him break it. God bless you, Prophet Chanel, for your seed tonight. Give him your heart and let him break it. In other words, what, what is in your heart that is not of him, let him break it so that he can go in and take it out and put in his love. See, yes, Lord, I hear you. For the ministers that are watching, for the pastors that are watching, and some of you have not said anything yet. For the apostles that are watching, God's going to give you more love in this new year. He's going to give you more love and give you more compassion. Amen. As you minister to his people, but you're going to do it through, through the love of Christ now. <sighs> Jesus, have mercy. I feel your glory tonight. Yes, Lord. So, so there is a shifting in the body of Christ. Mm. There is a shifting that is taking place. This is why God said tonight, amen, to, to give it to him. Everything that does not belong, just give it to him tonight. Give it to him tonight. Amen. Let, let's go a little bit deeper here. Amen. I'm going to finish reading verse two, uh, two. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. L let's read that B part again. L let's read that bottom portion again. Let's read the entire uh, verse again. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. Prove. It's time to prove now, says the Lord. It's time to prove now. Prove what is that good and acceptable. What is acceptable unto God? 
whatever is in his word that he commands us to do. That's what's acceptable and perfect will of God concerning our lives. Right? Yeah. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Amen means and it is so. Come on. Amen means and it is so. So for those of you that are in agreement now, you, you're going to 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 you're going to let go of the ways of the world. You're not going to be conformed to the world, but you're going to allow God to transform your mind. To renew your thoughts. To the obedience of Christ Jesus. Amen. So God says, amen. He said, tell my people to give to give their bodies to me. Present your body back to God again. All right. And for those of you that cross over into the new year, I do it every year. Amen. We take communion. My, me and my children, we take communion. Um, I also wash my feet. Amen. With water. Glory to God. And also um, we're starting our water consecration. I want to say this because water represents purity. Water represents cleansing. Come on. And you need water to live. All right. So we always start the new year with our water consecration. I just put it in our ministry group. So I want to encourage the 25 of you that are watching. If you're not a member of PIPW ministry, go on this water consecration with us. Why am I saying this? Because it's great to go into the new year cleansing yourself. Amen. And sometimes I started a day or two before the new year comes in to prepare my body. Okay. So those of you that are going to go into water consecration with us, you're just drinking water with your meals. What's going to happen is your food intake is going to decrease. You're going to find yourself drinking more water throughout the day, and it's going to cleanse your system, your large intestines, your small intestines, your, your body is going to begin. I'm not a doctor or a nurse, but we've been on this consecration for a long time. Okay, we have done it many times. And it literally purifies the body. And let me just say this, water heals also. I'm not a nurse and I'm not a doctor, but water heals. Do you hear me? We need water to live. Come on. And many have the testimony that when they come on this water consecration, they're more focused. They have no desire for coffee. They have natural energy. Come on, they don't need energy drinks. They don't need tea. They don't need lemonade. They don't, oh, <laughs> come on. We do this consecration here at PIPW Ministry often. And it kills the flesh. It kills fleshly desires. I know some of you may say, I don't know if I can do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, the first three days is going to be kind of hard if you are a tea drinker, a coffee drinker. You know, if you're just used to all of the sugary drinks, it's going to be a little hard for you. But I promise you, if you press your way through this consecration, God will be pleased. I feel his glory tonight. The spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God will be pleased with your sacrifice of giving up the coffee, giving up the tea, giving up the sugary drinks. I'm telling you what I know. And you will find yourself having energy. And also you will lose the pounds. Amen. Because a lot of times we have waste inside of us that has not yet come out. Come on, which causes fatigue, which causes, you know, the fact that you can't sleep or you're oversleeping. Who am I talking to? God bless you, Mother Addie, tonight. Amen. Sometimes because your 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 um your colon is not cleaned out, you're either oversleeping or you're not getting enough rest. See why y'all need a covering? <laughs> See why you need a pastor? See why you need to be connected to PIPW ministry? I don't just preach and teach foolishness. Amen. I give what God gives me to give to his people. So many of you need to do the consecration. If you're going to do it, send me an inbox or send me an email. And my email address is prophetesscarmen100 at gmail.com. All right. Can somebody post that, that there for me, please? Uh, one of the ministers, um, Evangelist Arlene, can you post my email or somebody post my email? And um, those of you that are going to join in this water consecration with us, even if you a member, let me know. All right. Um, Pia, I'm sorry. Prophetic. I'm sorry. 
prophetesscarmen100 at gmail.com. All right. My email is prophetesscarmen, and that's C A R M E N 100 at gmail.com. Letting us know you're going to be on this water consecration with us is 21 days. 21 days. 21 days. 21 days starting on January the 1st all the way to January the 21st. All right. We're also going to be on our prayer line starting the second Monday in January. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kashina, Sister Kashina. All right. So the second January starting the second, I'm sorry, the second January, the second Monday in January. <laughs> Amen. So we will be on January the 9th. Thank you, Sister Lashanta. There's my email address. Y'all can screenshot it, write it down, and let me know that you're going to join in the water consecration with us, all right? It's life-changing. It's life-changing. So many spiritual benefits. You're going to be amazed, all right? Um, and that's water with your meals, okay? So you still can eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but you're not going to want to eat as much. After that first week, I'm telling you, your appetite is going to be cut. You're going to desire more water. You're going to find yourself lighter. You're going to be waking up in the morning, refreshed, rejuvenated, revived, restored. I'm telling you, it works, okay? Hallelujah. God gave me this years ago, all right? So um, January the 9th, the prayer line will start back up again, all right? So make note of that. And we will be posting that. We'll probably have a new flyer for the new year. Okay. A new flyer for our prayer line uh, for the new year. Amen. But that's January the 9th. We'll start back up our conference call and it will be at night. All right. It'll be nine, probably 930. We'll start at 930 PM um, on our prayer line and that's Eastern Standard Time. So that's 830 Central Standard Time. All right. Let's get through the rest of this word and I promise I'll be out of your hair. Amen. So the first thing God said was give him your body. The second thing the Lord says is to give him your seed. Give God your seed. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And when you start talking about giving or you start talking about money, people don't like that because they're just as stingy as they can be. But do not go into another year and you're not a seed sower. Do not go into another year and you're giving God anything. Do not go into another year and you're not tithing and not giving your offering. Amen. It's quiet, but it's all right because I'm obeying God. So the Lord said the first thing is give him your body. The second thing he requires is for you to give him your seed, which is your sacrifice. He says, and he will break it and he will also multiply it. He said he will give some 30, some 60, some hundred fold back to you. And then he gave me Luke 6 and 38. Luke chapter 6, Luke, Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, give, that's a command. Give, that's a command. He says, give, that's a command. I'm telling you all what it is. It's a command. So the word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and run it over. The Bible says, shall men and women give unto your bosom. What that means, people of God, is. And God says, in the same measure that you give, it shall be given back to you in return. When we give to God, when we give to God's kingdom, we give to his ministry. Come on. Even when we give to God, God's leaders, because it's biblical. If you read in the Old Testament, amen, they took care of the priests. Come on, read the Old Testament. They took care of their leaders. Come on. They took very good care of them. Amen. Amen. So when you take care of God's church, you take care of God's ministry, you take care of God's leaders, you are giving back to him. Amen. So God said, give and it shall be given unto you. He said what? Good measure. Hallelujah. Press down, shake it together and running over shall men give back unto your bosom. 
for with the same measure that you have given. Hey, this is why I teach my members and covenant partners to give abundantly. Hallelujah. Because your abundant seed, oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. Hallelujah. It's coming back. Oh, it's going to come back to you. I promise. Because when you sow into great soil, Hallelujah. When you sow into soil that has been plowed, that has been, that has been nurtured, glory to God. When you sow, hey, shatanda baha. I feel a release for those of you that are sowers tonight. Hallelujah. God, hey, shatanda baha. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The Father says he's going to bless you beyond measure now. He's going to bless you beyond measure now. Hallelujah. He's going to bless you beyond measure now. And so the word of God says, press down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you have given is coming back to you in return. The Bible also says, if we sow sparingly, we shall reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we shall reap bountifully. Right, Prophet Chanel? Come on. She didn't even hesitate the night to sow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophet Chanel just sent her seed. She didn't hesitate to sow. Amen. Come on, somebody. When the spirit of the Lord is pressing upon you to give, just give. Just give, especially while the water is troubled. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Amen. Just give as the spirit of the Lord is telling you to give. Come on here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the Lord gave me Psalm uh, 84 and 11. I'm sorry. I'm skipping. Amen. Um, so God said, give him your body. Give him your money, which is your seed, your sacrifice. He said also your time. The Lord, he said also your time. Amen. Give God your time. And God began to speak to me when we was on the broadcast. Amen. And the Lord said that, um, he said, there are many who are going to leave their jobs so that they can do ministry. And there were two on that broadcast. The Lord said there were two. I couldn't even see because the numbers got stuck by the time I came on the broadcast. But the Lord said there were two on that broadcast earlier who are going to leave their jobs so that they can do the work that God has called them to do. Now, you got to just you just have to have enough faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I've been serving God for a long time. So my faith in God is is extraordinary. And I'm sharing that testimony because whatever God tells me to do, I do it. Amen. So I have, I have exuberant faith in God. My, listen, he told me to move to Massachusetts. I'm packing up and I'm moving to Massachusetts. I don't need, he ain't got to give me all the details. I just do what God tells me to do because that's where I'm at. That's how I got to Raleigh, North Carolina. Come on, because when he said it, I was like, now, God, wait a minute. And he took me back to the prophetic dreams. He said, daughter, I showed you this seven years ago. He said, go back to your book. Hallelujah. And I went back to my book and the prophetic dreams that he gave me. Welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina. The sign. Hallelujah. It, the, the sign that, it, that he showed me in my dream was the same sign that's here that I never saw before. Amen. So I'm sharing that because there are some of you, God is going to shift you off of your jobs. He's going to take you off of your jobs and he's going to have you to open businesses. Some of you are going to be marketplace ministers. Hear me in the spirit of God, please. There are seven of you. Yes, God, I hear you. He said seven. There are seven of you on this live right now that God is going to have you to be a marketplace minister. What does that mean? Your businesses are going to represent Christ. Hear me in the spirit. You're going to be an entrepreneur, which means you're going to be a boss, which means you're going to employ. Ah, shake. You're going to employ people, which is going to cause re cost, which is going to cause resources. I hear the Lord saying back into the community. Catch the revelation. God bless you, brother. He. Amen. So there are many of you that are getting ready to start businesses and your business is going to represent the kingdom of God. The Lord says there are seven of, hey, I hear you, God. He said, hey, yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm, this one right here is heavy because it's seven of you and the Lord, mm, I got to say it. Yes, Lord. There are seven of you that are going to have marketplace ministries. And some of you, the Lord says, are going to have multiple ministries with multiple businesses within your marketplace ministry. 
But the Lord says he, hey, Shatanda Baha, he is calling for for a seed for your ministry. Marketplace, ministry. He says he is calling for for a seed that is going to open the door. Hey, Shatanda Baha, hallelujah, for your marketplace ministry. I hear God tonight. He says there are seven of you, seven of you, seven of you. Before January, hey, Shatanda Baha, before the end of January, God says you will birth out the first business. My God, hey, he said, according to your faith, Woo. Hallelujah. You shall birth out the first business by January the 30th. Woo. Shake. Hey, Hallelujah. There are seven of you receive that word tonight. He is challenging you tonight to sow into your marketplace ministry. I hear God. I hear God tonight. And it's an abundant seed. Also is a seed of 100. Hallelujah. It's a seed of 100. I hear God. For there are seven. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Mm. Jesus have mercy. And this word is heavy. And hey, Shatanda Baha. The Lord said, just as the anointing is heavy right now, He says, that's how your businesses are going to flourish. That's how your businesses are going to prosper. Hallelujah. I see trucks. Hey, Shatanda Baha. I see keys. I see buildings. Yes, Lord. For there's somebody on this live tonight. I see you purchasing a truck. Glory to God, like a like a tractor trailer. Reman Sukoda Bashe. And it's going to start with one tractor trailer. Then you're going to have two tractor trailers. Hallelujah. Then you're going to have workers. Say if the Lord, my God. Hallelujah. I see businesses. I see suites. Like small, small businesses, small um areas that God is going to give some of you. There's going to be a small area. Then some of you, God is going to give you an actual building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I see keys and I see the deed. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. That God is going to grant unto you. Hallelujah. I see deeds. Amen. And I see keys. Hallelujah. That God is going to grant unto you. Those of you in marketplace ministry. Hallelujah. Hear me in the spirit. And that seed amount is $100. I hear God. I didn't want to say it, but I have to be obedient. Hey, because your blessing is in my mouth. Reman Sukoda Bashe. Hallelujah to God. Yes, Lord. I said, your blessing is in my mouth, so I have to be obedient. And those of you that prove God tonight, you trust God tonight with your seed of 100. Name your seed Marketplace Ministry. Name your seed Marketplace Ministry. The Lord says within 30 days by January the 30th. Hey, hallelujah. Many of you shall have your first business. Ooh, I feel the anointing of God. Yes, Lord. You shall have your first business. It's seven of you. The Lord says seven of you. Get your seed in the ground right now. PIPW Ministry, dollar sign, cash app. PIPW Ministry is a pink flyer. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it's pink. Amen. PayPal.me slash prophetic impact. Uh-huh. PayPal.me slash prophetic impact. We also have Zale. The Zale account is 267 five seven six whoo i feel a move of god tonight hallelujah fresh wind fresh fire yes god i hear you two six seven five seven six eighty three fifty eight god is about to breathe on your business hallelujah there are some of you that have businesses i hear the spirit of the lord saying he's getting ready to breathe upon your business yes lord and some of you amen i hear god saying he's going to relaunch Woo. Hallelujah. The business. There are three of you on here. You started a business. God says he's going to relaunch the business. Mm. My Lord, get your seed of 100 in the ground. I hear God. Watch God do it. Watch the Lord move on your behalf. I got to go. Hallelujah. We, hey, Shatan Baha. Yes, Lord. We got, we got to go. Amen. So, so the third thing, amen, that God said, to, for you all to give so that he can break it now the first thing was your body the second thing was your seed your sacrifice your money amen then the third thing god says is to give him your problems give him your problems there are some of you that struggle with um depression amen i'm going to pray over your seed in just a minute man of god amen i see i see y'all so and i'm going to pray over your seed in just a minute 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God says, give him your problems. There are some of you that struggle with depression. God is going to break that depression off of you. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oppression, depression, suicidal thoughts. My God, you were thinking about taking your life just this year, 2022. Amen. I want you to get your seed in the ground. Hallelujah. And name your seed. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. Name your seed. Hallelujah. Name your seed no more. That's what I hear God saying. Name your seed no more. There are some of you that, that struggle with depression. You struggle with suicidal thoughts. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Get your seed in the ground. And the Lord is showing me two, three, 23. Uh-huh. Seed of 23. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The seed of 23. Hallelujah. And David said in Psalm 23, yes, God, I hear you. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh God, 2023 is going to be a year where you're not going to want for anything. For God is going to be your shepherd. He's going to lead you. Hallelujah. He's going to guide you. He's going to go before you. Hallelujah. As you trust God, even with your seed of 23. And this is for those of you that struggle with depression. I hear God saying, my Lord, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, no more depression. No more. Name your seed no more. It's breaking even now. It's breaking even now. It's breaking even now. It's breaking even now. Yes, Lord, I hear you. It's breaking even. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. It's breaking even now. The Lord says He's going to give you back your joy. Hallelujah. He's going to give you back your peace. My God. He's going to give you back everything that you lost in 2022. That the enemy has stolen from you. He says, get ready to get back your joy. Hey, hallelujah. No more depression. No more oppression. No, hey, glory to God. No more suicidal thoughts. Uh, no more thinking that you're less than. God says, I'm even breaking off low self-esteem. Hallelujah. Because I have a great future for you, said the Lord. He says, I have great plans for you. So I have to break off even low self-esteem in the name of Jesus. Get your seed of 23 in the ground and name it no more my God is breaking off of you right now. In the name of Jesus, yes, God. Break it, God. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Break it. Break in the name of Jesus. Um, as they give it to you, God, as they give their stress over to you, as they give over the anxiety to you, my God. As they hey, and I must as they give over their thoughts. Um, oh my God, in the name of Jesus. Um, oh God, break it. Shatanda behind. Break it in the name of Jesus. Every generational curse. Uh, oh my God, in the name of Jesus. Break up. Hallelujah. Every generational curse off, off of their mind, off of their body, off of their spirit. In the name of Jesus. God says it's breaking even now. He says, as you go into the new year, you're gonna go in believing God for the vision that he has given you. You're going to go in believing God for every word that he spoke over your life. You're going to go in the new year believing God, trusting God in a greater capacity, in a greater way now. Hallelujah. And you're going to see manifestation, says the Lord. You're going to begin to see manifestation. Oh, God, there's a release. There's a release. There's a release. Hallelujah. I said there's a release. There is a release. Oh, tap into the glory of God. Come on, tap into your release. Come on, tap. Hey, Shatan Nabaha, tap into your blessing tonight. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He says, I need your body. He says, I need your seed. He says, and I need your problems. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter um, uh, 5 and 7, hallelujah, 1 Peter 5 and 7, Jesus says, cast your cares. That means give it over to him. He says, cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Hallelujah. He wants to settle you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, he wants to give 
give you a sure foundation now. Glory to God, a foundation, hallelujah, that is not made on the sand. Oh my God, not a, a foundation, hallelujah, where there's nothing there. But God says, I'm going to give you a foundation now, a sure foundation. Hallelujah, as you cross over into the new year, I'm going to give you a stronger foundation. Hallelujah, for the enemy has come to destroy your foundation. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, as you trust me on tonight, I'm, I'm going to give you a stronger foundation, a sure foundation. Hallelujah, a foundation that cannot be broken. Oh my God, a foundation that when the wind begins to blow, mm, and the storm begins to rage. Hallelujah. You will not be moved in 2023. For you shall be anchored, says the Lord. As I'm giving you this foundation. Hallelujah. You shall be anchored in me from this day forward. In the name of Jesus. He said, no longer shall you look back. You will not desire to go back. Hallelujah. But you will press your way forward. In the name of Jesus. With a sure, strong foundation. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, somebody bless him in this atmosphere. Come on, somebody praise him in this atmosphere of miracles. I see miracles. Hallelujah. I see miracles. Yes, Lord. I see miracles. Hallelujah. I see miracles in this atmosphere. Oh, yes, God. The Bible says in Psalm 84 and 11, God says, no. No good thing um, will he withhold if you walk up rightly before him. And many of you are about to see the good thing come to pass. Uh, you're about to see the good promise come to pass. Uh, you're about to see, hallelujah, everything good um, that the Father has promised you. Uh, you're about to see it with your own two eyes. Um, you're about to see the manifestation um, of every word the Father spoke over you. Um, and some of you, it's been years of prophecy. Hey! Yes, God. Some of you, it's been years of prophecy. Some of you, last year, God gave you a word. And you saying, God, are you still going to do it? He said, no good thing. He said, oh, God, what I promised you is a good thing. He said, I will not withhold it from you any longer. He says, it shall be your portion in 2023. For you shall possess the land, saith God. You shall have what I promised you, said the Lord. You shall walk in the promise and no man can shut the door. He said you shall walk in it and no man can close the door. He said what I'm getting ready to do for you he said nobody will get the credit for this one. He says I'm getting ready to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said you're getting ready to praise. You're getting ready to rejoice. You're getting ready to experience everything. I need you to hashtag everything. I need you to hashtag everything. I'm seeing the boats coming in uh, in the realm of the spirit. Uh, I'm seeing God, uh, hallelujah, in the realm of the spirit. I see the boats uh, coming to the dock. Um, and God is showing me even now, um, hallelujah, that your supply is on the way. Um, God is showing me even now um, that the boats are coming in. Uh, and it's coming in with your stuff. Um, oh, my God. Um, it's coming in with your goods. Um, yes, Lord. Um, he says everything um, that I have promised you. My God is on these boats. I can see it in the spirit even as I'm looking at these cameras. I can see the boats coming in. And God says to tell you all everything he promised you. Hey, glory to God is on these boats. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He said everything you need is on this boat. Everything is on the ship. Ooh, and there are many. Hey, there are many. There are many that are coming to the dock right now. There are many. Hey, he said, because of your faith. Woo, glory. He said, because of your faith. Hallelujah. Because, hey, Shatan He said, because of your faith. He said, because of your faith. Woo. He said, because of your faith. I'm sending it in now. He said, all because of your faith. Hey, glory to God. He says, I'm sending it in now. All because of your faith. Mm. I'm sending it in. The boatloads of blessings. Woo. 
the boatloads of blessings. My God, my God. Mm. Hey, for there is a supply that is coming from heaven. Woo. That no man, no woman will be able to doubt. <laughs> Hallelujah, that God has blessed you. No man and no woman. Ooh, I hear you, God. Hallelujah. This is for 12 of you. Mm. Hallelujah. There are 12 of you that have been believing God for the promise. Mm. Mm. Ooh, I see your blessing pulling up. I see it. I see it and I see them locking it in even now. I see them locking it in. You know how boats come up to the dock? Hallelujah. But there are people that are out there that are very strong, Sister T, and they are locking in the boats. <laughs> in the realm of the spirit, this is what I see. They are locking it in to secure it, Sister Kashina, so that it doesn't go nowhere. Woo! Hallelujah. This one ain't going to sail away. Hey! God says this one, Evangelist Arlene, is not going to sail away. <laughs> Sister Cynthia, he says, this one, glory to God, hallelujah, will not sail away. Who am I talking to? Woo, Holy Spirit is ministering to somebody tonight. You were ready to, hey, you were ready to give up, my Lord. You were ready to give up, hallelujah. Even Brother Heem, I see you commenting tonight, and you've even sown your seed, man of God. Hallelujah, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that you were ready to give up. God is showing me that you were ready. Hey, you were ready to give up. You were even tired of false voices. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, Brother Heem. Uh-huh. The Lord says for me to encourage you even now. Hallelujah. That he led you here to this life. You are so tired of people. You're tired of false prophets. I hear God saying, mm. you're tired of empty promises. For many have given you empty promises, Brother Heem. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that he has led you here to this live tonight. And not only is he going to bless you, Brother Heem, he's giving you the spirit of hope again. You're going to hope again. You're going to believe again. You're going to thrive again. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see you dreaming again, man of God. I see you dreaming again. For the enemy has tried to come to discourage you. And God is telling me to tell you to stay in courage because every word that he has spoken over you for the last three years, I hear God saying he's going to grant unto you every word three years ago. Mm -hmm. Three years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the word of God says, and I will restore unto you the years. Mm hmm. Hallelujah. God is sealing some things. I see him sealing some things, Brother Heem, in the spirit. God is sealing. He, he's putting a, a lid on it. He's sealing some things. And if you know anything about a seal, uh, Brother Heem, and for the other three of you that are believing God for years of restoration, anytime God puts a lid on something, it's because he's about to do it. Ha! Huh? It, it is now full to capacity. Woo! And God said, tell my son is because of his faith. It is because of your faith. Even when people have discovered you and your faith, your faith is what kept you, man of God. Your faith in God. I see you shutting some people out and shutting and closing some doors to some false voices. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say it to tell you that it's your faith in him that has drawn you back. To even hearing again from his prophet. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. Yes, God. There are two more of you that are on this live. You became very discouraged from false voices. And God says he's replenishing you even now to believe again. Amen. Am I speaking right, Brother Heem? Listen, we don't talk, man of God. I don't. I don't know, but, but, but God knows. Amen. If I'm speaking right, just say amen. Hallelujah. There are, there are two more of you on this live. You are tired of false voices. You have heard so many false voices and you, you were ready to just shut out the prophets completely. He said, yes, Lord. Amen. You, you were just ready to shut out everything and everybody. And you're like, wait a minute. I, I refuse. 
I refuse to continue to let people say anything to me, let people say anything over me. Amen. And because of that, it has caused you to be discouraged a little bit. But there are two of you tonight. God is restoring you. Amen. And you're going to also hear your ears. Your ears are going to pop. The Lord says your ears are going to pop. Something's going to happen with your ear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and the enemy wanted your ear gates to be shut. But, but something is getting ready to pop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said it's gotten old. It, something is getting ready to pop. Amen. Your ear, your ear gate is getting ready to pop. Hallelujah. She says me. Amen. It's getting ready to pop because God says he wants you to hear his voice again. Hey, hallelujah. He wants you to hear his voice again, 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 again. He wants you to hear his voice again. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. God is doing it even now. He's doing it even now. He's doing it even now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's doing it even now. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Some of you may hear like a static or like a like a muffle. It's, 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 the Lord is showing me it's sounding like a muffle. It's, um, you know how your ears get ready to pop? That's what's happening with some of you right now. Amen. God is opening your ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be able to hear his prophet again, to be able to hear his prophetic voice again concerning your life. And the Lord says confirmation will come. Confirmation will come in 2023 of some things. Confirmation will come. You know, it's nothing like somebody speaking to you and what they're saying is false or what they're saying you've never heard before. And you're like, no, that don't agree with my spirit. Well, for the three of you, including Brother Heem, the Lord is showing me that in 2023, it will be confirmation. You're going to get sudden confirmation. It's going to happen so quick. It is going to be, it's going to be quick, saith the Lord. Um, yeah. And then after the confirmation is going to come manifestation. After confirmation is going to come manifestation. Mm -hmm. Quickly, quickly. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's like a renewal. Amen. It's like a renewal of your... Um, it's a renewal. Amen. Of your hearing. Y'all got to excuse me. I don't like dry lips. I'm sorry. I can't be on live. <laughs> can't do it. Sorry. Not when I have lip gloss or chapstick. Uh-uh. <laughs> Amen. It's a renewal of your hearing. Whew. It's like lately you've been saying, am I hearing right? Am I hearing correctly? So your ears are going to pop. Hallelujah. You're going to hear God clearer. Amen. Even the beginning of January. Some new things are going to birth forth with your hearing said the spirit of the living God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, I am done. I am through. Amen. We're not even usually on on a Tuesday. I hopped on to be obedient to God. Amen. And so those of you that are part of PIPW ministry, y'all know we got a two-day revival coming up. Amen. We have a two-day revival coming up January the 1st and the 2nd. Glory to God. We have none other than Prophet DeMarco Grant, who is coming all the way from Hollywood, Florida, to bless us here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Those of you that are close to Raleigh, listen, if you got to drive five hours, you need to be here. All right. January the 1st is a Sunday. Amen. Um, and that service is at 2 p.m. All right. Our regular time of service, January the 1st, will be at 2 p.m. Amen. She says, pray for my family this year. Hold on. Let me get your comment. This year was not my year. Three of my children were shot. Oh, wow. I remember you saying that, Relena. Yes, I remember you saying that. Uh-huh. I think two of your children I had prayed for. I didn't know the third one was shot. Amen. Um, but that means you need to relocate. That means you need to move. If you have not already moved, amen, because those bullets could have hit other places. And we thank God that your children are still here. Praise Jesus. Amen. It's time for you to move. 
it's time for you to move. Pray and ask God where he wants you to go, um, Sister Elena. Protect your children. Protect your children. That's what I hear. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Yes, Lord. That's what I hear God saying. Protect your children. Some things we don't need prophecy for. Some things is just wisdom. Come on. I remember when God told me to move. Um, I was given January the 2nd. I'm sorry. January the 2nd is a Monday and that service is at 7 p.m. <laughs> Our two-day revival. Listen, I remember when God told me to move from Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is my hometown. I love Philly uh, with everything inside of me. You know, um, yeah, I love my hometown. hometown. But God told me to move and he said it's going to get worse. God told me, he said, daughter, it's time to pack up and it's time to move. And he said, it's going to get worse. And I heard God very clearly. And when I started packing up and moving, um, and I finally got to Raleigh, North Carolina and got settled. Sure enough, the shootings had multiplied. The deaths had multiplied. When I tell you all had multiplied. And I mean, the children that were doing the killing, the ages were like 10. They were 10 years old, nine years old, selling drugs. I mean, eight years old, you know, committing murders. And it has gotten extremely worse. So it used to be 16 and 17 year olds, you know, dealing drugs and on the corner and, and running, you know, the gangs and stuff. Now it's eight, nine and 10 year olds. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so God told me to move and I did exactly what God told me to do. And when he said it was going to get worse, surely it has gotten worse, amen. Now, if God is telling you um, or showing you something, don't stay there because now you're in disobedience. And God can't cover us when we are disobedient. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're going somewhere tonight. We're going somewhere tonight. If we remain in disobedience and God is sending warning after warning after warning and we stay in that place, we are now uncovered because God has sent warning. And anytime the Lord sends warning to us and we don't obey, now he's a gracious and merciful God, people of God, to where he'll 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 keep speaking to you. He'll send another prophet to say the same thing that the last prophet said. Then he'll send another prophet to say it again and say it again and say it again and say it again. Now there comes a time when he'll lift his hand. Come on. There comes a time. Thank you, Minister Tanya. There's the information about our two-day revival. There comes a time when God will lift his hand. People don't believe it. People don't believe it, but he does. He'll lift his hand and now you're open. See, some people don't believe that. They say, no, God will never lift his hand. Yes, he will. This is why David, when David prayed, David knew he had messed up. But one thing David said was, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David knew how precious the Holy Spirit was. And he knew that if God took, took the Holy Ghost from him, that he would, he would be nothing. Come on. So this is why David said, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit. You can have everything else, God. You can even kill me. That's what he said. But, but please don't take away your Holy Spirit. Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me, God. Listen, I messed up. I keep messing up. But Lord, please, whatever you do. Whatever you do, God, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Come on. Come on. And David pleaded with God. Just like some of us tonight, you need to plead with God. Come on. Come on. You need to plead with God. Amen. Come on. David cried out to the Lord so many times in the book of Psalms. Most of the psalm was written by David. Come on. And David was king. But David was also a shepherd boy also where God had trained him and taught him how to tend after the sheep. Come on. And not only that, David slayed Goliath. Come on. So there were many great things that God allowed David to do, but he had to get to a place of repentance also. Y'all got me teaching again tonight. I'm getting ready to get off of here, but somebody needs this. Amen. So sometimes, Sister Elena, and those of you that need instruction or direction or wisdom, sometimes we don't need prayer. Sometimes we just need to move. Sometimes we just need to go with the plan that God spoke. 
Sometimes we just need to do it. We just need to activate it. Come on. You, you just need to put it in motion now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to put it in motion now. Amen. Come on. You, you just need to do it like Nike. You know, Nike say, just do it. Come on. It, it's time to do it now. Hallelujah. And this takes me back to the other Sunday and I, I'm, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. Um, last Sunday, amen, at the end of our service, the Lord had, had put me down. He put me on my knees. Amen. Um, he put me right on my knees and um, God began to speak. And he said, tell my people, do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Because a lot of times we become fearful and we allow fear to grip us. And huh, if God is telling you to do something, just do the work. Come on, do what he is saying for you to do. Now, of course, you don't just jump out there with no leadership, no covering. Come on. <laughs> no. Amen. You, you, you use wisdom, but it's time to do the work. Come on. That's what he told PIPW ministry. It's time to do the work. Come on. If you don't ever start, then how can you, how can you start? <laughs> if you don't never start, then how can you start? Ha, ah, glory to God. I just felt a release for somebody right there. I don't know who you are. Amen. But receive it in Jesus name. Receive it in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Just do the work. He who has begun a good work in you shall continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ's return. Hallelujah. Amen, Dominique. She says, I remember that day I was watching it, Apostle. God moved that day. Amen. Amen. And she's on Instagram. Amen. We thank God for you, Dominique. Amen. God, you know, he's speaking. But is the church listening? God is speaking, but are we really listening? Ah, for there are some of you that are in disobedience, I hear the Lord saying, and you believe that you're in obedience. Listen, if God has called you to do something, get under the right leadership and do it. The Lord is soon to return. If God is calling you to do something, get under the right leadership and do it. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Listen, you have to be accountable to somebody. There's some leaders on here tonight. Who are you accountable to? Maybe that's why your ministry is up and down like this. Maybe that's why it's like a seesaw, up and down, up and down. You know, one week you on the mountain, the next week you, you, the enemy done knocked you down. Come on. You need a covering that can pray you through as God is using you. I'm an apostle and I have an apostle. Make it make sense. <laughs> Come on. I am an apostle. Amen. And I have an apostle. Do you hear me? I am accountable to leadership. Somebody may say, no, you an apostle. That's the highest office. It is. It is the highest office in the kingdom of God. But I have learned to still be accountable. Okay. Accountable. Because accountability is what got me to this place. Hey. So you think I'm going to leave, leave being accountable? I don't know who God is talking to right here. Come on. Finances jacked up because you don't have a place to sow. I hear God tonight. How can, thank you, Holy Spirit. How can you expect people to give unto you or to give into your ministry and you're not accountable and you don't give anything? Uh-oh. Time to get off now. Because now I'm getting in good trouble. You can't say amen, just say ouch. And after you say ouch, say Lord, fix it. We're going into 2023. You have to go in with a new mindset now. You have to go in with a new mindset now. You have to be accountable to somebody. Come on. Elisha needed Elijah. And in the process, he received what? Because he submitted to his leadership, 
he received a double portion of his anointing. Come on. There are mantles that are dropping. Will you catch your leader's mantle? Somebody may say, I don't need my leader's mantle. I got my own mantle. Oh, okay. All right. But whatever happened to Ruth and Naomi? Come on. Ruth knew she needed Naomi. She said, Naomi, you know what? Wherever you go, I'm going. She said, your God shall be my God. Come on here. She had enough sense to know. Hey, hallelujah, that Naomi knew some stuff that she just did not know. And did not God leave Ruth to Boaz? <laughs> Come on here. Come on. She was gleaning in the field and the man of God saw her. She was at the right place at the right time because she was in, under submission to authority. Ah, so many more in the Bible. Amen. That was submitted to leadership. But you have people now say, no, I don't need to be submitted. This is the last thing I'm going to say and we're going to exit. I'm in the place that I'm in now because I submitted to authority. Jesus Christ first and then my leader. My former pastor, I submitted to her leadership, sat under her ministry for four and a half years. And that's when I learned true holiness. I am a product of great leaders. So what you see, this, this is not just me. What you hear, come on. Yes, it's the anointing of God. Yes, it's the gift that God has given me. But guess what? I could have been unsubmitted. I could have been like those prophets going wild. I'm going to write the book. Don't nobody take it. <laughs> prophets going wild. Just wild. Running like donkeys. Just all, and I, I said the word donkeys. Just all over the place. No submission, no accountability, not even foundation in their life. Most of them living out of a cardboard box. I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. No stability. Credit just as jacked up as it can be. I'm getting in trouble. But they got your thousands of dollars. But they credit just as messed up. Living in a cardboard box. Come on here. They in their car doing a Facebook Live. Now listen, I do Facebook Live from my car all the time. But I ain't sitting outside of the Shaky Butt Club either. Some of y'all listen to these prophets. They right outside of the Shaky Butt Club. They get ready to go in and take your money. And go put it in somebody's drawers. Well, first they got to get it out. Huh. But you, hallelujah, glory to God. I received my prophecy. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm just saying. In 23, we got to be free. Come on. In 23, uh, oh, the Bible says you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. I tell my members all the time, look, please examine my fruit. And if you see something wrong, let me know. I'm not a leader that is, that is exempt from correction. Come on. I, I'm not a leader. I, my, listen, my ministers are on here right now. Y'all can hit those hearts. When we have ministry meetings, do I not open up the meeting at the end and say, what do y'all have to say? Is there anything that you want to say? That's right. She said all rewards, but they never talk about repentance. Come on. That's those false prophets all up and down Facebook, social media all day long. They're not getting your heart ready for Jesus return. They're not getting you in a place of repentance so that you can cry out to God and have a true relationship with the Lord. But see, my ministers are on. When we have our ministry meetings, oh, at the end, I, what do you? What would you like to say? 
Amen. Evangelist Arlene says, yes, you do, Apostle. Amen. Because I'm not exempt from correction. That's how you remain a good leader anyway. Because you're open. When you are open and you're not closed. I don't know why we're going here tonight. You can't be closed-minded and be a good leader. You have to be open-minded. Amen. That's how my leaders taught me. So I don't know who needed to hear that, but I love you all in Jesus name. Listen, let's give it over to God so he can break it. So he can break those things that need to be broken. Come on, give him, give him that heart that is broken. Meaning if you have, if your heart has been broken by people, if you have been betrayed, if, if you have unforgiveness, give it over to God tonight so that he can break it and make it whole. That's the word that he gave me. Amen. As we cross over as the church. As the church crosses over into 2023, the Lord says, give me everything that I need from you so that I can break it. Everything. Amen. Everything that you need me to handle, your problems, your situations, your circumstances, give it to me, says the Lord. Cast it over to me, says God. And even with our finances, the Lord says, give it to him. Give it to him so that he can multiply it, so that he can stretch it. Give God your time. Give God your schedule. Because I promise you, when you give him your schedule, I'm almost done. 30 more seconds and we're going to exit. When you give God your schedule, he's going to say, take out that, take out that, and replace it with this, and replace it with this. Amen. And then you will have what is called structure and you will have what is called foundation. Amen. She says, what a word from the Lord tonight. Amen. We thank God. We truly bless the Lord. I thank God. Amen. I thank God for this word. I thank God for you all, God's people. Amen. I thank God for every member covenant partner that has taken the time to join. Y'all know we're not on on a Tuesday night. Amen. But I thank God for it. Have a wonderful night, everyone. We'll be back on tomorrow night if the Lord says so. All right, God bless you all, and shalom. God bless. Amen. And also, thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sorry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord says to pray, amen, over every seed tonight. Amen. So let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every seed that has been sown in the name of Jesus, every um, business seed, every marketplace ministry seed, every seed of no more. Yes, God, I hear you. Hallelujah. Every seed that has been sown into your kingdom, into your ministry, Father. Father, I pray right now, God, that you will multiply it, that you will stretch it, that you will give some 30, some 60, some 100 fold return back to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, let it come quickly back into their hands, the seed that they have sown tonight. And God, if you desire to give it to them spiritually, give them spiritual blessings, I pray. In the name of Jesus, blessings that we cannot, hallelujah, pay for, oh God. We know, Father, hallelujah, that as you release your word unto us, it's by faith that we receive it in the name of Jesus. Even sowing, oh God, we know that it takes faith in you to even sow. So, Father, I thank you for every person that believed you by faith on tonight that has received this word, that has sown into prophetic impact prayer and word ministry. Lord, I thank you for multiplication and I thank you for manifestation. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And Lord, bless those who wanted to give but didn't have it to sow. For these are hard times for some of your people, oh God. But you said in your word, you give seed unto the sower, bread to those who are hungry, and water to those who are thirsty. So Father, those who wanted to give, I pray that you would supply unto them seed to sow, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Yes, Lord, that there will be a harvest. Hallelujah, that will come to their hands as well. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, people of God. Share this broadcast before you exit. Have a wonderful night. Shalom. Amen. God bless you.